Okay, so I gave you this, so far this was all introduction and a little bit of detail, whatever you may call. Uh, this is very important thing, the balance scorecard I'm going to cover here. Uh, I have my slides also, but I'm just feeling lazy to go and find out those slides, uh, balance scorecard. <laughs> Um, we'll, I'll show you from the book. Uh, balance scorecard. Uh, yes, please. Uh, yes, sir. I, I was just saying uh, that uh, for, for the financial performance measurement, you guys didn't upload the slides. So will you do it later on? I don't think if we have the slides, we would have uploaded. Oh, oh, okay. Because uh, there was there were the slides. You know, you you taught it for, uh, by the from the slides. No, I did. I teach from slides. Yes, uh, the financial performance measurement. I'm talking about chapter. So then, so then, I if if I taught from slides, then I will then I will upload. Yeah. Okay. Now, balance scorecard. What is balance scorecard? Just like for measuring the financial performance, you learned those skills like you know uh, variance analysis and budgets. For measuring the non-financial performance, like you said, okay, I've got material budget, I've got labor budget, variable overhead and fixed overhead. You have different types of variances. And you said these are the dimensions or these are the types of areas which I need to investigate. Material, labor, variable overhead, fixed overhead. That was in financial. In non-financial, like I said that there could be 100 different measures. So what we do that we group all of these things into four broad categories, just like we had four financial things in budgeting and variances. We can also have here four measures. So balance scorecard, it is a tool. It is a method which assesses your non-financial performance and it assesses non-financial performance from four dimensions, from four perspectives. Those four perspectives are, like we say that four dimensions of your non-financial performance. One is, how do the shareholders, they see us? How do our shareholders, they see us? By the way, uh, within those four, this, how do shareholders, they see us? This is the financial side of your performance measurement. I mean, within balance scorecard, how do shareholders, they see us? It is kind of financial thing, but then you have, how do our customers they see us? How do our customers they see us? And number three is that, you know, which business processes are crucial, just like I was telling you in case of McDonald's, that time speed of delivery is very crucial. Which performance measures or which areas, which business processes are crucial and how good or bad are we doing them? And number four was learning and growth. That how are we, uh, improving as an organization, are we, are we learning or not? Now, before I start giving you this thing, I'll just give you some example, which would probably you could relate it to your life as well, because many times probably you have used that expression. We have seen many businesses who were able to do or who were doing very good, and then we saw them growing. And when they grew, they started performing bad. And we have said, you know what, this company was doing very good before. Now their service has gone down. Now they are not as good as they were before. And sometimes you say that, you know, they've got a lot of customers. They have spoiled. Now they don't care for their customers. It's not that they do not care. The thing is that they are not capable of taking care. Because what happened? When this, when this business started, it was a small business, probably it was a team of 5, 10, 15 people, whatever. It has a management and there was a director, there was a manager and there were some other people and they were very committed and they still are, by the way, very committed and they started a business and the business had a volume of 1 million and they could manage 1 million volume. But then what happened that because the business was doing good, the business expanded. And now it is not $1 million business. Now it is a $5 million business. Now, when this business expanded, these people, they fail because they were not capable of managing a $5 million business. Their capabilities as individuals and their business processes in general, they were not suitable for handling that level. They were not suitable for managing that level. 
they never learned as individuals and they never learned as an organization. So their performance goes down. So as the businesses are growing and as the market is changing, individuals need to learn new techniques, individuals need to learn new skills, individuals should improve their skill set though so that they can you know manage or cope with the change and the business should also when it was a small business you have, you were doing accounting manually now you have grown up you should have a computerized accounting system before you were receiving orders manually now you should have computerized or ordering system you you should have some tablets you should have some barcode readers you should have some you know scanners on your sales counter you know in big shops what do you see they don't calculate by hand they don't use calculators if they start using calculators there would be a long queue of customers they have put scanners there so products they scan ting 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 price is done invoices out this is your check give me money 50 dollars finished i mean this is the requirement of a bigger business you cannot have a bigger supermarket without such a software so this is what happens that learning and growth was the fourth dimension. So first dimension of the balance scorecard is how do our shareholders they see us? This is the financial side. Second one is how do our customers they see us? I mean, the product reliability, company image, brand loyalty, company loyalty, etc. Second, third is what are our key processes? Like which process are crucial to this business? You need to identify. And number four, about learning and growth how how are we learning how are we managing the learning and growth of our individuals and the learning and growth of the organization so these are the four dimensions on which it is done now if you remember that many times you have gone to some restaurants or you have gone to some hotels and when you go to a hotel within your room there is a card there and they want your feedback they always leave a card there that you know how about the pricing did you like our pricing did you like our kitchen did you like the food did you like the room service did you like the uh, you know the washroom did you like the laundry and they ask you like 20 questions and you say they, you ask they ask you to rate from one to five you are putting rating three four five three four five or maybe from one to ten seven eight nine ten or five so they give an opportunity to customer to make comments because i said that non-financial performance is external focus now when i'm doing financial performance i get information from accounting department i say tell me what is the cost of material i want to find out this is, this is internal focus but when i do non-financial performance it's an external focus external focus means i cannot ask my accounting department i have to ask my suppliers i have to ask my customers so i take information from them how good or bad we are doing and based on that information, we make our analysis. We find out how good or bad are we doing in different areas. So this is the balance scorecard approach. So let me just see. I have explained to you. I just want to show you one figure if it is given in the book. If it is not given, I will make it myself. Uh, no, it is not given in the book here. So let's let me go back to Excel. Let me connect to Excel. And I'll show you. Do you people see an Excel file? So this is your balance scorecard. We call it balanced scorecard. Do you people see Excel file? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And these are the four dimensions. On one dimension, you have your customers. How do our uh, sorry shareholders? How do our shareholders they see us? How do our customers they see us? And then you say that what are the crucial processes, my business processes? And then you have your learning and development. Learning and development or learning and growth, whatever you may call it. So these four areas you will investigate. These four areas you need to investigate and you need to make your standards here and then make sure that you meet those standards. Now, for example, the idea behind now there is a traditional way the traditional way of business was that i want to make money i want to make money and that was totally financial performance the modern way of business is not internal focus on profits but on external focus 
and we say that what we say we say that we the process should start with you know learning and development learning and development and we say that as a result of learning and development you will have improved processes so you should work on learning and development of your people you should train your people you should educate your people you should you know uh, give them new skills you should give them new tools when they have when you have improved quality people when your people are more educated or more learned they will be able to create improved processes i mean you know you have very capable team of people and this this capable team of people will sit down and think what is the best way of doing things how can we take what is best i tell you an idea for example you know what happens in mcdonalds first you used to go inside then they said that you know not everybody needs to sit down we should also make drive through so they made a drive through that was a change in the process and then they said okay within the drive through what happens if you have noticed that sometime there are more cars and everybody is slowly driving to the window where you give your order and you give the money then you drive 5 meters and there is another window where you take your food and you leave the drive through this is what happens generally but you might have noticed that when there are more cars and more customers and they want to make the process fast you know what do they do one person one staff member from mcdonalds he walks out and he does not let people to go to the window he just starts visiting the car he is walking and is coming to your window car window and he ask you please give your order and he is taking the order here so they just create a separate window not like one window there there is a walking window a person walks out of the restaurant comes to the car knocks your window your door and he takes your order so improved processes somebody thought about it what happened previously in banks everybody used to go to the bank and there are 20 people sitting in the queue what are you doing here oh i just want to take out some cash are you sitting here waiting for taking out cash yes i am what should i do i have to wait one hour for taking my money then they thought okay let's put an atm outside they put an atm machine so that people can those those people who do not have some serious transactions or complicated transaction they can simply put their card and take out the money <coughs> and it solves the problem and then before the atm machines were only taking out the cash they were not accepting cash then came another machines which were also accepting cash so previously you could use the atm machine only for taking out cash so if you have to deposit then you went inside and you used to sit down again you know what i cannot use atm because i don't have to take out cash i have to deposit cash and the machine does not accept cash that's why i'm sitting and i'm waiting okay how to solve this problem we created such machines which are now accepting the cash that problem is also solved and then there was another problem you know what i want to convert my money into a different currency i have got dollars i want to convert it into some other currency or i have some other currency i want to convert it into dollars now atms also are doing the cash conversions exchange rates so improved processes when you have learning and development your people they learn and improve they as a result you will have improved processes improved processes will result into improve customer satisfaction and improve customer satisfaction will result into improved products okay so we said that this is actually your step 1 you should start from here don't start from how do i make money it does not work like this you should think like how do i improve just like what you are doing now what are you people doing you are learning because you know that when you will have improved learning you will have more value so what we should do in organization we start thinking about learning and development learning and development results in improved processes 
improved processes results in improved customer service customer satisfaction and improved customer sec uh, satisfaction results in improved profits this is how it works so the process the this process actually it goes like this okay so the starting point is not how do i make more profits you never focus on this area okay this is your shareholder you never focus on this area you start focusing from here learning and development and this is the outcome this will ultimately come to you. So this is the idea behind the balance scorecard. So they said that, you know, start from here, then it, as a result, if you, if you achieve this, this will come in, when this comes in, this comes in, and ultimately profit will come in. This was, um, you know, your balance scorecard. Now you can give a reading from the book as well. Then what we had here, let me go back to, one another topic from the index which i saw it is called economy efficiency and effectiveness we call it three e's three e's um, 